Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 18th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. Last week I mentioned how the OS X video conversion application Handbrake was compromised and then infected with a version of the Proton backdoor. Well, uh, often these incidents are very abstract and the impact isn't really all that clear. In this case, however, there is a nice follow-up from Panic Incorporated, or well, maybe not so nice for these people, because uh, while they develop uh, various iOS apps, the developer at Panic downloaded uh, one of the compromised versions of Handbrake during the time that it was infected. And before the infection was made public, someone had already downloaded loaded his source code using compromised git credentials. The attacker who stole the source code then demanded a ransom to not release it to the public. Now, Panic isn't too concerned about such a release, but is somewhat concerned about possible backdoor versions of its software, given the history of this particular group. Now, Panic has decided not to pay the ransom, probably a smart move on their part because little really confirmation here that the attacker will not do anything bad with the code after the ransom is paid. But they already have invalidated the old developer ID so it can no longer be used to, for example, sign any malicious software. And NIST recently updated its password guidance. You may have seen this in the news last week as something many felt was long overdue as past guidance, for example, did not address adequately how really passwords are compromised these days. And one of the big problems, of course, these days are passwords shared between sites. Richard today wrote a post summarizing some of these changes, one of the most published and probably most important issue that was addressed uh, in this new guidance is that regular password changes are no longer recommended. And this has really been something that has been brought up a couple times over the last few years, that if you force your users to regularly change your password, what really happens is that users are then more likely to use the same password across different sites, different applications, which of course is a much larger risk than someone brute forcing a password in a modern, well-designed application. So it's nice to see that NIST has changed its guidance because this is important for a lot of organizations that essentially use NIST as a guideline when they're implementing their own policies. Web services dealing with XML data often are susceptible to XML external entity vulnerabilities. And well, this is really a vulnerability that's often not well understood uh, by pen testers as well as developers. Oracle's uh, PeopleSoft is one example of a complex system with multiple web service endpoints that has been susceptible to these vulnerabilities in the past. Now, typically these vulnerabilities are used to leak local files, but they can also be used to send HTTP requests to other system. So one particular interesting target of these HTTP requests are other web services that are either listening on localhost or services that are blocked from remote access by firewalls. With an XML vulnerability like this, an attacker can then reach these services and uh, then further escalate privileges or compromise other parts of the system. A blog at Ambionics Security shows how to use this technique to send requests to the Apache access service that is included in PeopleSoft and they actually show how to escalate uh, the vulnerability then to execute arbitrary commands on the system. 
The exploit is somewhat generic and uh, could be used against different XML external entity vulnerabilities in recent versions of PeopleSoft. They did release uh, the Python code to actually then send the respective requests. So while in itself this isn't really a vulnerability or a new vulnerability, it is a way how an attacker can further exploit an existing XML external entity vulnerability, which of course makes that a really interesting block for a lot of pen testers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.